and that'll work just fine. So I'll go back to machine number one. We'll see if it's finished creating that cluster. And we can see that it has. Gives us a little report of uh, what it did. Finish. And we'll see this will now populate with the cluster that we just created. So we can look at a few things. One thing I want to look at is the storage and what the disks are actually doing. And now if you'll notice here, we talked earlier about the idea of a witness disk, which doesn't really have any, it's just the database of what's, how our cluster is configured. And in this case, what it did was create it. It took the larger disk, the, the 50 gig disk that I actually wanted to put my virtual machine on, and it made it the witness disk instead of using this smaller 500 meg disk. So what I'm going to do is go into cluster management and, uh, and just change that. I'm going to say manage the, the quorum settings. Now here's the options that I have for, for uh, how I want to do my, my, my cluster nodes, how I want to do the quorum. We're just going to take the one that's recommended for a two node cluster. And uh, I'm just going to change it if we drill these down. I don't want this 50 gig machine to be my witness disk. I want this 500 meg one to be my witness disk. So I click next, click next, and it's going to make that change for us. So now this machine is set up the way that I want it. I've got, uh, if I look at my storage, I've got this smaller disk, which is my witness disk. I've got this 50 gig disk, drive F, which has my disks on it. Now what I want to do is go ahead and uh, create a virtual machine and then cluster that virtual machine. Now I've already got a virtual machine, uh, a virtual hard drive built, and it actually sits on that F drive now. So it'll just take me a second to uh, to add a new virtual machine using that disk that's already there. And we obviously want to store that on uh, the F drive, which is our, our uh, cluster drive. Inner 12 make the machine is fine. This network switch we've already set up. Use an existing disk, which is also on the uh, F drive. So now we start this virtual machine. I'm actually not going to start the virtual machine. It's here, it's turned off because I can't cluster it while it's turned on. Uh, so the next step is to go back to failover cluster management and say take this VM we just created and make it a put it in the failover cluster, make it highly available. So I'm just going to go here and uh, to services and applications. You configure a service or application. Now this is great because this wizard takes us through a lot of the process we used to have to do ourselves. When you create a clustered service, you have to specify all the resources that it uses, what IP address does it use, what hard drives does it use, what services does it use. Now we've got this wizard where we just say what I want to cluster is a virtual machine. This is which virtual machine do you want to use. We say this one right here that we just created. And it builds all that for us. It figures out what drives, what services, everything it needs. And as you can see now, it's finished. It has clustered that virtual machine. I can go ahead and bring it online. So now it's up and running. Um, we'll switch back to Hyper-V. You can see it's running here. We'll connect to it. Actually, it looks like it's just booting up, so it'll take it just a minute to start up. But once it's running, um, what we can do is show you how we fail it over from one machine to the other. And we can actually do that now. When we fail over a virtual machine, there's a couple of things that take place. First, we take whatever happens in RAM right now on the machine. We write that out to the disk. We start the uh, virtualization services on the second machine in the cluster, and then we take that memory that we previously dumped out to disk and um, load that back in again so the machine picks right up. So here is that virtual machine. Looks like it's still booting up. We'll give it just a minute to boot up. All right, it's ready for us to log on.
Okay, so here's our virtual machine, and we'll just start some work here so you can see that it's working. So we're just going to leave Notepad there. Notice I'm not going to save my work or anything. I'm just going to leave Notepad running like that and uh, shut this down. And I'm going to take this VM and I'm going to say move it over to Node 2. So we're doing a failover. We're doing a manual failover right now. You'll see a couple of things happening here. Notice that it is saving the VM out to disk right now. So everything that was in RAM, it's writing it out to a disk. And then what you'll see is the, uh, the drives will get switched over. The owner will become cluster number two, cluster machine two, and it's coming back up now. So it's already actually failed over the disk to cluster machine two. Now it's loading memory back uh, off the disk. So that failover happens in, I didn't stopwatch it when we started. It takes, it takes less than a minute for a VM of this size using really all component stuff. Remember, everything's happening here over iSCSI storage. Uh, which means it's using our same network bandwidth, everything else is happening. So that machine has failed over, it's finished, it's now running on Cluster Machine 2. If I switch over to Cluster Machine 2, bring up Hyper-V Manager, we can see the VM is there, if we connect to it, uh, we'll see it'll come up and we'll see Notepad uh, still running, we didn't lose the status of our VM. Now that works because we did a manual failover, so the machine actually had time to take a snapshot of memory and fail all over that with us. If the machine, if the physical machine lost power, uh, the VM will still fail over to the other machine, but it'll be just like it had lost power. It'll reboot and come up from, uh, from a reboot state, so we, we lose some of the current state on the machine. So we connect back to the VM, and look, here we are. Notepad, everything's still in place. We didn't lose anything, even though we failed over the whole machine from uh, one side of the cluster to the other. That's it. That's our cluster demo. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. No problem. <laughs> I'll see, see you probably next week. All right. We'll think of something else to talk about then. Okay. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.